into the online broadcast network. After Buzz TV, over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. Oh, TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! <laughs> there we go, oh, yeah! Oh lord! Uh, 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 Time of a prank called Bel Air. All right, now Don, if you know no. this part, you gotta say it with me. You ready? Because Just I know because where you're from. from. The area, you're from here. Me. You ready? It goes in West, West Philadelphia, Philadelphia, born and raised. Oh, we were too early. We were too oh, early. Okay, well, we you too told early. me to go. I, I did tell you to go. That's my fault. I, a little premature excitement there. All right, ready, Don? Here we go. In, in West Philadelphia, Philadelphia, born and raised. Uh, playground is where I spent. Yeah, the my days. Chilling out, Max and all, shooting them. You would think okay. I would know every word, but you I don't. You can cut it. You right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. This is After Buzz TV Spotlight On, and I am blessed to have a Philly native in the building with me. But he's not just a Philly native. He's an actor. He's a director. He's a playwright. He's a producer. He is a renaissance man. Keep going. He is a singer. Keep going. We're going to make him sing later. <laughs> and get this. I just found out he is a xenophobic. Exactly. Y'all thinking, what is a xenophobic? Actually, I didn't look it up. Xenophobia, that is the fear of dogs. Well, and I just well, that. it's not that I won't. I, the fear is not like I'm going to bring out the hives. It's just that I'd rather them to have their space than I have mine. So you, you like your space from, from Absolutely. dogs? Absolutely. And I don't want to hear, oh, my dog doesn't bite, all dogs bite. Oh, oh man. Well, well, do all dogs go to heaven? I don't even know if any of them there. <laughs> that is right. I think they if have their sauce. Listen, since I plan on going there, if there's something, they better have a kennel. <laughs> well, speaking of dying and going to heaven, wow! You, the, the, your recent play that just obviously uh, uh, opened to critical acclaim, oh as God. all your yeah, shows do, yeah. "Living Ain't Easy" and "Dying ain't beautiful. ain't beautiful." That's right. Yeah, just opened up this past weekend. Yeah. Sell out houses every night. <sighs> Done. It got extended to next weekend. We're, that's right. We're what? this weekend coming up Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, I know you worked extremely hard, as you do on all your shows, uh, um, leading up to the release of this. You know, after you saw the success this weekend, what is your reaction to that? Well, you know, the thing is, um, Living in Easy, Dining and Beautiful is like my 29th or 30th production. Overachiever. I, but here's the thing. Um, you don't know when you're writing something like this how people, how the public's going to take it. Because I'm not, I, I don't do cookie cutter stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't write about, you know, uh, see Dick run, go get Jane and go up the... I don't, I don't... No, I'm not doing that. I mean, everybody does that. <laughs> so I sort of deal with everyday topics of life and experiences of life and try to give you comedy as well as dramatics, but, but dealing with topics and stories that everybody can relate to. It just happens to be that sometimes it's an all African-American cast, but when you come see the show, whether it's one of my films or one of the stage plays, you get to see that, well, I know some of those people. I know I, I know those type of things have happened to me or, or I'm, I'm very much into um, having someone that I know that's happened to. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you know, and, and, and the, you know, you never, but you never, you cannot, as successful as I am, and I thank God for that every day, you can never take that for granted because the public is fickle. Mm -hmm. You know, what they like this week, they may not like next week. Oh, yeah. You know, and so you have to, you can't go in with that, I know what I got. No, you go in that with, I hope you like this and enjoy and you get the message. Well, speaking of, you know, I, I guess being thankful for your fan base, mm -hmm. you have accumulated such a large fan base since you moved to Los Angeles in mm -hmm. 2000 with your plays, your films, and things of that sort. And, you know, one of the questions that I had for you is play after play, you seem to top yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you'll do one play and then the next play, raise reviews. And then the next play after that. And how challenging is that as a writer to, you know, go in there every time and just top yourself play after play? Well, I don't look. OK, there's a couple things. One, one I'm only in competition with myself. Mm -hmm. I don't care what anybody else is doing. I don't say, oh, I'm going to I'm going to challenge that person i'm gonna i'm gonna beat that person i don't think that mm -hmm. i think in terms of because i have a passion for 
storytelling that, uh, and I do, as, as a writer, I do get writer's block where I'm like stuck and I can't, I can't decide, with this newest production, I could not decide on an ending and where it was going. I didn't know where I was going until actually the week prior to the cast getting the script. As a matter of fact, they got the script the, the evening of the day I finished it. So they got the script the evening of the day you finished it, which right. was, I'm assuming, the first week of rehearsal. It was a table read. The table yeah, read, okay. Yeah. And, and they didn't get the entire script because it still had to be typed. So they only got like act one, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but um, I mean, that's what, I mean, I, I do try to, what I don't like is for someone ever to come see a production of mine and say, oh, that was just like what I saw him do last time. Mm -hmm. He just changed the title and changed some characters. That's not me. Yeah. You will never come to a Downey Watch production and say, it was good, but it was like. Mm -hmm. No, that's not going to happen. And speaking of, you know, uh, I guess your fans, some of the things that you, you will never see them compare the two in a sense where they saw similar things. One of, you know, I, I was blessed to be in a Don B. Wells production, Life <laughs> Stories, that, um, which was back in July. And uh, first of all, just it, it was an incredible experience working with you. Me and Don actually have a history, not to get off subject, but I auditioned for him about eight, nine years mm -hmm. ago. Um, he was nice enough to see me. I was, I just moved out here and, um, you know, Don was nice enough to see me and gave me an audition. Now, I didn't get that part, but Don told me, he was like, we will be in touch and I will reach out to you one day. And the reason why you didn't get the part is because we ended up not having the second cast of that show. I remember that, Bachelor or- The Bachelor one of the, party, yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, which was, a real, which was a big hit as well. Yes, so, it was, thank you. But, uh, you know, but anyways, you know, from the experience of being in a, a Don, B play, uh, Don B. Welch play, one of the things I remember was talking to the audience afterwards. And, you know, one of the biggest compliments that I heard from the audience was, you know, that play was the authenticity of it. I saw myself in that. I went through that situation. My mom went through that situation. My brother is currently going through that situation. Yeah, There's a yeah. huge connection yeah, yeah. that your audience has with your um, with your work. Yeah. And, you know, I guess as a playwright, and you said this before, a lot of the stuff you write are issues that maybe you've encountered in your life yeah, or experience. Yeah, I mean, or, or, you, or you know someone who's gone through something. I, 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 the, the smallest thing can trigger a storyline for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to write about it. Like I had gone to, uh, I spent a vacation in, in um, uh, not, not Cancun, where'd I go? Cabo. Cabo, thank you. Yeah, I, I just in, figured, Can, <laughs> Cancun, Cabo. I, I, look, I was in Cabo for eight days and I stayed at a really, really wonderful resort. And I was one one day I was sitting out by by the ocean and I was just thinking about, hey, I, I, I'd like to maybe write a story about uh, couples and uh, relationships, people that go on a vacation to a um, uh, to an island like this. But then I started thinking about which island would I like to use, mm -hmm. you know, in my mind. And I thought about um, the island of Curacao, which is like one of the well, they call it the best kept secret of the, of the Caribbean because a lot of people don't have not, don't know about Curacao. But Curacao is a beautiful island. Um, it's it's like it's not that it's like not that close, but not that far from Venezuela and uh, the Dominican Republic. But it's a beautiful island where the where the the language is Portuguese, Spanish, and believe it or not, Jewish. The, 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 the actual... The, uh, you mean Hebrew or... The, the population. Oh, the, 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 the Okay, yeah. the culture. Okay. Culture. And, um, but they speak ba basically a lot of, and of course I'm in the French too, but they speak a lot of uh, uh, Portuguese and Spanish. Okay. So, um, and I thought, because I, I, it's a beautiful place, and I thought, why not set it there? And then I found out some really interesting things. Like, for example, because uh, I was going to make this all fun and light story of a romantic comedy type thing. And then you begin to find out uh, the history of a place. Um, Carousel happens to be, has the, the, the largest brothel in the world. Where, because I would have never thought. Because prostitution is legal. But what the problem is there is that it's been known for men or women to go to places like Venezuela and the Dominican Republic and bring underage girls back to work. Like now, sex trafficking. Absolutely, but here's Ooh. what they do. They are often told, their families are very, very impoverished uh, children. They're told, their families are told, listen, we'll, we'll, we'll get you a job um, at a hotel, uh, chambermaid or waitress in a restaurant. And a lot of times, some of the girls are brought over and they are, uh, their passports are taken, and, uh, and, and believe me, 
I'm not saying it's just Curacao. Yeah. It's Curacao's a beautiful island. I'm just saying when I start digging into the research, I thought, well, now I'll, t I'll touch on that very lightly because when you see the production, it's very lightly touched on because we, we're dealing with uh, singles and couples relationships. Okay. That happen to meet at an island on an island instead of going to, I don't know, uh, Brazil. They said, hey, let's go to Curacao, which I want to say this because I know people from Curacao. It is a beautiful <laughs> island. It was just an island. So don't be afraid to go and no, visit. All no, right. No, no. I mean, <laughs> don't let that do. you, it's, it, uh, Google it. You know, just yeah. to see it. It's beautiful. And the people are beautiful. It's just that I wanted to touch on that subject because it happens. But in any event, that's how it all came about when I was just sitting by the ocean one day and I thought, hey, I'd like to do a story on singles and couples who have gone to uh, this resort just for some of them there are there to work on their marriage. Some of them are there to see how many people they can get laid. You know, of course. Let's just tell the truth. Uh, the majority <laughs> of them, uh, probably. The single ones. Single. Some are married ones, too. Oh, sure. Lord. Yeah, I mean, that just happens. Let's just break it down. So, uh, <laughs> no judgment. Uh, no, 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 because I keep it real. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd but, say probably more married than single ones out there, but anyways. Good morning. Cool. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so in any event, that's what it is. And, and, and it was so well received last week. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I was like, they love it. And the actors are... My actors are all, a lot of young new actors that I've never worked with before, and they are. They, first, they had to get past the Don B. Welsh test of craziness, as oh, yeah. you know, and, and that's intense. That, that that's serious. And okay, they, they, well, yeah, you know, Kevin. Man, and that, once they got, I don't know how I survived, but go ahead. Well, some of them go home in tears, but I say, get you a napkin, and wipe it up, <laughs> come on back, come on back. <laughs> but um, they are they're just some of the most um, like dedicated. Uh, uh, passionate actors that I've ever worked with before. Yeah. I've worked with a lot of actors, hundreds. Yeah. But this bunch of, I call them kids because they're, they're younger, much younger than me, but these kids have, they've only had like nine rehearsals. And when we opened up, I sat there in amazement of watching them. Wow. Because they've put so much, and all my actors put a lot of work in. Don't, don't, if they don't, they don't come back. <laughs> but what I'm saying is these kids, I've never seen a bunch of actors so impassioned every day. I have actors who don't drive because they don't have a car. That they take, take public they, transportation? They, they come on buses and trains and rehearsals and stay till 12 midnight. Some of them have children who live two hours with, never complain, wow. when are we going to get out of here? I got to go do this. They're there to work and learn and get the whole Don B. Welch experience. Yeah. Because that's a which is experience. priceless. It's priceless. You can't get that anywhere else. I tell you. No, that's especially true. the degree of insanity. You know it, that it, that's in a league of its own. Absolutely. But it's great. It's <laughs> great. So you know, to all the actors listening out there, you cannot make any excuses if this is what you want to do. Sacrifice. That's if right. people are taking buses, at hundred, however far away to get there, your butt don't need to complain. And I don't like. And, I don't like excuses. I don't like lateness. And I don't like procrastination. Oh, we're gonna, are, we're gonna get to some of that later. Yeah, that, the, right there, <laughs> I'm done. So if you're any of the aforementioned, stay do home. not bother auditioning. No, just stay home. For Don, yeah, just stay, stay home. home. Don't go anywhere. Now, real quick, Don. You know, we we kind of started off with the Philly <coughs> entrance. Uh -huh. You know, Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song. So you know, let's go back a little bit further um, to your beginnings. You know, before you had the book deals, before mm -hmm. the movies, before you were selling out theaters. Yes. At what age did you know that God had blessed you? To, uh, with the gift to be a creative genius? Well, you know, as I go back to age five and six and can remember wanting to do, I didn't know what it was called. And I didn't know what that was called show business. <laughs> I just knew that I loved being creative. Like my parents said he always had a, a pen or a marker in his hand. He was drawing or writing. I was always singing and wanting to dance. It was all this stuff that I, I just wanted to do. And I was fortunate enough to have parents who, who said, listen, because my brother and I are totally different. My brother is very mechanically inclined. My mom said, he's, Vernon is uh, uh, mechanically inclined. You are musically inclined. We were both given the opportunity to do what we want. he Listen, my brother can, is the kind of person that if your car is going down the street and he can just sit there and say, oh, they need this and they need that 
And you're like, really? he can rebuild an engine. I'm not changing a flat. Wow. My brother, my brother can take an engine apart out of a car and put it back together. <laughs> it I'm, sounds like he's like AAA, <clears throat> AAA on demand. Listen, you know? I'm not even going to fix a flat. If you don't have the can in the car that says fix a flat so we get to the gasoline <laughs> station, you better call AAA. I'm not doing so it. So if you're going on a road trip with Don, make sure that there is somebody in there. Listen, that I, listen I, was, I was actually in a car <laughs> last year and we were sitting there and it, it, something, a flat or something happened right off the 101 and I just sat there so I, I said, and you, I said, you better go do something. Please tell me you weren't with women in the car because you're never supposed to make a woman change a flat. Look, look, the, the, you shouldn't the, have a car. Don? I'm the, not doing it. I will call Triple A. Oh, Lord. That's why I, I don't even I don't even drive and I have Triple A because I'm not going to get caught. Now, Don, you realize that YouTube has how-to videos on everything now. You could just, why are you sitting mm -hmm. in the car, how to change a flat? You and know? there's a YouTube with me saying how Don says he's not going to do certain things. <laughs> You want to look it up? <laughs> uh, I wonder how many hits that had. So, so, it, so anyway, so your brother was the one that was yeah. mechanically, and you were the one that was yeah. more literary or creatively inclined. And we were, and we were give, we were given the wonderful opportunity of being able to be who we wanted to be mm -hmm. as kids. So we grew up like that. Yeah. And I, and and that is something that you always, uh, at least I always you know, uh, thankful for. Yeah. And God, you know, I, listen, and what I also love is the fact that we were, we, we were told that we had to go to church, but we enjoyed going to Sunday school and church. Like it wasn't like, you're going to go this Sunday. It wasn't a chore we, or an obligation. You guys enjoyed. Listen, I grew up in a house that was spiritual and it has helped me mm. be who I am today. Don't start, because I'll hum with you. I'll start hum with you. <laughs> this little lie to my... Right, well, anyway. we don't do that song, but I'll start <laughs> you, we... you would get one of the songs that everybody knows. You know, I was going to do some Mahalia Jackson, but I didn't want to, you know, ruin it. But uh, at any rate, but no, I think that's good. I mean, I, you know, a lot of times you see parents, uh, or at least parents rearing children, where they're trying to dictate the path right, that the child right, goes. Right, right, right. And it's refreshing to hear yeah, you say, yeah. you know, how important it is to just, you know, that you're blessed and grateful right. your parents let you be creative and find your, you know, I mean, but the, I think the good thing is they had you, uh, they had that spiritual foundation. With Absolutely. And, and, and whereas I wanted to go to college, my mm -hmm. brother said to my parents, no, I want to go to trade school. And they said, okay. Wow. And that's where he went, and that's why he's the mechanic type guy that he is today, and that I am what I am because I was able to say I want to take classes in English, and I want to, but I, but I also went to school to teach school, but I wanted to be able to do music, and I had uh, piano lessons and private voice lessons, anything that I wanted to do. We wanted to, we we were able to do that. Well, God bless your parents, because obviously you and your brother both didn't just come out all right, but y'all came out exceptional. So. Well, I don't know about all that. Somebody, <laughs> but, <laughs> listen, I know the people that would beg to differ, but I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. That's all that matters. Now, you know, you, you spoke real quick about English. I know that you actually had a background as a teacher for a little while, middle school teacher. You dabbled in for a little while. Um, I also the, taught English to foreigners in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the evening school. Uh, oh, wow. And sometimes you would come to class and um, it was it was the nationality school and um, it would be French, uh, Korean, <coughs> excuse me, um, Japanese, French. I, I, I didn't know what the world they were saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew when I put the word cat up on that board, you better know what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> so I was able to, I mean, I'm not saying they couldn't speak any English at all, but I was there to teach the fundamentals, and I, I loved that. I loved doing it. It was challenging. Now, I have to ask, do you at all facilitate your, did you facilitate your classes like you do your rehearsals? Well, you know, does that I, Don B come out in the no, class? No, because they would, because because they would be so afraid. <laughs> I know, right? What, what does he they, say? I don't want to. I don't want to stay in America. I want to go back. <laughs> I want right? to go back to where I was. <laughs> this guy is crazy. <laughs> well, well, it's a good thing they did it. It's a good thing they did it. Now, you know, um, you're out there um, in Philly working, and then at, <sighs> there was a point in time or a moment that you had when you were like, "It's time to move to L.A." Well, actually, it wasn't happen. even. Yeah, it wasn't my. Uh, um, decision well it was my decision ultimately it's, but i was doing very well in philadelphia writing directing and, and producing stage plays making a lot of money uh my plays were traveling from connecticut all the way down to petersburg virginia weekly wow and and um will smith said to me whenever you are ready to move to los angeles 
and move into television and film or whatever. I got you. <clears throat> so I came out um, here to visit him <clears throat> in the early 90s. To and test I, him on his word, right? Well, no, actually, <laughs> I, well, I, I believed him. I uh -huh. believed him from the door. Um, and then I came, then he called me and said, um, <clears throat> I have a role for you in the, on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as an actor. And uh, I, you, I want you to fly out uh, this particular Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And I had no, I figured it'd be maybe one word or something. And um, <laughs> we had 30 inches of snow in Philadelphia. So the, the airport was closed and I was like, stressed out that I would not be able to make it. And that was on Monday. Wednesday, believe it or not, one um, runway opened and they were letting flights out. And I flew into Los Angeles and when I got to Los Angeles, uh, Burbank, I believe we flew into, um, it was 80 degrees and beautiful and sunny and I thought, what is the world? Right? <laughs> and I went and, and there was a car service there and it took me right to, uh, Burp, to uh, NBC Studios and when I went in, I started asking for his dressing room, and they told me where it was, and I went down the hall, and as I'm walking down the hall, I hear my name on the intercom, something like, uh, Donald Welch, please come to uh, Studio B. I'm thinking, what? So I go in the studio, and the entire cast is on stage with scripts, and Will hands me a script and says, turn to page 54, you're Detective Frank Sims. And I said, wow. okay, okay. Oh, well, I so mean, the, straight, straight off the plane. <laughs> so I just started... Um, reading my lines and trying to take this whole thing in. And uh, what I learned, though, was, especially what I learned in, in doing that opportunity as a co-star, was that whatever you learned on Monday night, when you came to the studio on Tuesday, there would be a different color paper under your door, which would mean that, that, that your, your dialogue changed. It was revi oh, oh, it was, my uh, goodness. Oh, with revisions. Oh. And I said, well, what in the world? I done learned all this shit last night. Y'all going to tell me? But, <laughs> but That's how the TV world works. Exactly. Which, on the night that we shot, that we shot in front of a live audience, Will likes to tell a story that it took me 25 takes. For my lines, twenty-five it, takes. It's not true. It was like, twenty-five. It was. It's too not, bad we could have called Will right now no, and see. You what, know what? He does. He tells people that all the time. In fact, it was maybe how many takes? Nine or ten. What? That's that's still that's that's ten. Well, that's a dime. And maybe I'm. Maybe it was like eleven. I don't know. But I, shame I, it, it, on he, you. He tells people that because I I tell you one scene that was funny. I had a scene with Alfonso Rivera, and um, he was supposed to run downstairs and say something to me. But in my mind, I forgot that we had that they had revised the line. So we're in front of a live audience, and people are there, and I'm thinking, this is your big chance. You can't screw it up. And he runs down the steps, and there's uh, James Avery, uh, Uncle Phil, and there's Will, and I have lines with all three. And all of a sudden, Alfonso runs down, and he runs over to me. Alfonso is Carlton. Yeah, yeah. And he runs over to me, and he just stares at me. And I said to myself, he's trying to mess me up. <laughs> So I Not said, Carlton. I said, it's your line. Like that. He said, it's your line. And I said, oh, shit. You know, and then Will stopped everything. He said, okay, this is what happens when you bring friends and you try to give them a job. Oh, so I, so oh. I said, So I said, I want to go home. I want to go back to Philly. <laughs> You're kidding me. But I I'm, mean, we did it. He tells the story to this day that it was yeah we didn't we didn't think we'd ever get that particular one in the can <laughs> because of Don. So I was, about, I was about to say I wonder if any time uh, Will had a referral on the show after that if they didn't like critique the person well, to they, make sure that well listen he was the executive producer so they weren't oh, gonna okay. say so much that, but I can tell you that I went to visit him uh, in New York when he was filming um, Men in Black Three. Uh -huh. And I was on the set, and I was—I think the director is what. Uh, uh, I mean, was that uh, uh, what's that, his not face? Barry. Man, it was it Michael? No, 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 not man. Is it Barry um, Sonnefeld? I, I think it was Sonnefeld. Okay. Actually. Well, anyway, he was sitting next to me, and so he says, and "Will introduces him." He said, "Oh yeah, I, 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 yeah, I've heard about you. Um, you're done. You're right." I said, "Yeah," and he says, "Yeah, great to meet you." And he said, "Oh yeah, you were the one that took like 22 takes." Oh man! So I'm looking, and Will's standing in the back like this, laughing. All of a sudden, <laughs> the wardrobe person comes. They're all saying, "Hey, glad to meet you. Yeah, you were the one that couldn't get." The so now, Donald, from now on, when you guys see Donald, his nickname <laughs> is 22 Take, all right? I'm 22 telling you, if you, take. if you ever run into Will and say, Will, can you tell me, uh, Don Welch, how many takes, did he, how many times did you have takes on the set of the French Prince of Bel-Air? He's probably going to just shake his head. Now, he always adds stuff to it. It wasn't that many. But, but I always say, Google me now. 
<laughs> that, that is true. That is true. It was Barry Sonnefeld. Yeah, Barry Sonnefeld. Our producer yeah. just confirmed that. Thank you, because I felt bad about that. Yeah, because I was. Yeah. It, yeah, it was Barry Sonnefeld. Barry would have been very pissed off had we got he that wrong. He would care yeah. less about what he, I said. He, he, we actually have him on line one, so yeah. we'll get to him in a second. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that you know it's funny. Uh, uh, you're talking about Will. That actually kind of leads into my next question: Is you know how has he played a pivotal role in your success out here in Los Angeles with his support and? Um, you know, I guess just kind of being a mentor slash bigger brother to you out here. Well, right? I'm older, but I know what you mean. But here's the thing with Will. I am not the only person that Will has given help to and support to. But here's where you can mess up with Will. If you don't do what you say you're going to do. Mm. If you just come out and here. And that's a lesson in life. If you just come out here and think it's going to be a free ride and you don't put in the work. He's done. And when he's done, he's done. He, it's, it's and a... he's been in my corner for 14 years. And um, what I love, I told him two things when I came out here. I said, I will never do anything to embarrass you or myself. That's number one. <laughs> and number two. So you didn't embarrass him on the set that time y'all were shooting? Oh, that was before I, you moved I, That was yeah, before that I was moved before. Okay, you got to pass. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and the second thing is that. I'm my own man, so I'm gonna do my own thing. And what made him stay around so long is because he's proud of what I've done and where I'm going. Yeah. It, because of what I've done on my own. Mm -hmm. You know, you you know, some folks you can give them support and help, and they sit there with their arms folded. What's next? What you gonna do for me next? No, I don't do that. I'm a man first, my own man. I gotta do what I gotta do. Yeah, and speaking of doing things on your own and, and just really. You know, I remember moving out here. Um, this was in the early or mid to late 2000s. Everyone was Don B. Welch. You got to know Don B. Welch. You know, and I kid you not, I went to one of his, you had an open call about six years ago. <laughs> and it was in North Hollywood. You would have thought going up to it that it was like a Beatles concert or something. <laughs> there was lines, I'm talking hundreds of, and I'm yes. not embellishing. No, that's really true. I am not that's embellishing. True. Literally hundreds of yeah. actors yeah. wrapped around. And it, I, I'm not, I didn't know who was there. But, um, I, well, I, I came to find out the legend right. of Don B. But, you know, it, it just, it, I think of anything, and, and that happens every year annually yeah. when you have your auditions yeah. as well, yeah. you know. And I think of anything that just attests to, you know, how, you know, how brilliant you are. Not just as a writer, director, but, you know, as a person, people know you, they respect you, Thank and they you. know what you have to offer. And most importantly, they want to work with you. Well, you know, when I was going back and forth to New York from Philadelphia on the train, auditioning and for everything, and I would go and sometimes I was treated really badly with a cold shoulder and people just being just really, really bad how they treated people, just, just wanted to be able to audition. And I thought to myself, um, if I ever get in a position to be able to do this, then I'm not going to treat people that way. Mm. Um, That's good. And I it's, like a, it's about it's about the integrity that you, that you hope to have and that you hope people get a, a part of. Um, it's about passing it on. I don't believe that I'm doing anything special. What I believe is that um, I'm a vessel and that I truly believe that God is working through me. Mm. Give, I, I, I don't do any of this. I, I, and I also believe that, um, well, man, that, that that's a brilliant God you no, serve. No, no, no. Amen. I, I truly, or we serve. <laughs> I, and I truly believe that. And, and see, here's the thing. I know my purpose. Mm -hmm. And when you know what your purpose is, then you're able to keep walking. And doing what you got to do, walking by faith. You can say that again, you know, man. I, and I don't Bible tote. I can probably tell you one verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. <laughs> I know you know John three sixteen, but yeah. Well, you might have to start it. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> I'm just saying that I don't do that. Yeah. But I know a man who sits high and looks low, and I don't have a problem telling people. And because I'm also known to cuss you out. Absolutely. Oh, I'll cuss you out. Yeah, with the quickness. I'll cuss you out, but the words I use that you might think are cuss words, they are. Ain't nothing in the Bible say I can't call you that. <laughs> no, but that... that those are man-made words. Those are, those are man-made words. But, you. you know, I like the fact you said you don't Bible tote or anything no, because no. I think ultimately, you know, a, as a believer, mm -hmm. really it's not about Bible toting. It's about showing. It's about Absolutely. exuding the love of God. Setting, and, an, setting, set, an, setting an example. And this is a... This is, listen, this town... Don't let, don't get fooled. Mm -hmm. This town is crazy. <laughs> I love what crazy I Crazy is an understatement. Well, I could say other things, but I'm going to say crazy. <laughs> I love what I do, yeah. but I also know who I am. Mm -hmm. 
And that is so important in this industry if you know who you are. I don't wake up trying to uh, pass anybody or be anybody. I wake up every day thinking about how can I make the world and my and my surroundings a little better, mm -hmm. even when I'm not feeling that great. Yeah. Because we all have days where we're like, okay, I just want to stay in the bed today. Uh, well, and speaking of you waking up and making the world a better place, you know, I've actually compiled together. Uh -oh. And if you're not a friend of Don B. Ooh. Welch on Facebook, or excuse me, on Facebook, Donald Welch, please add him because the man is just like a, a spitting philosophical guru when it comes to quotes and things like that. Actually, I can take oh all of Don God. B's quotes and make a book out of it and Lord, sell it. Lord. I'll give you a percentage. Don't worry about it. Lord. But I put together three of my favorite oh, Facebook oh. posts from you. Oh, some are inspirational, some are rants, but uh, <laughs> I, got, I got them all on here. Okay. Now, the first one is a really nice one, and it really spoke to me personally, I'm, as with everyone, it says, and it was recent you did this, no matter what, you can't take it with you, in, in mm. parentheses, material things. Make people in your life more important than things. That's right. You can't take them with you either, but you'll probably feel better knowing you cherish relationships more than material stuff. Absolutely. Boom. Absolutely. Love it. I Absolutely. mean, I think if everyone lived by that, you know, the, the, the world would be a better place because especially in L.A., we glorify and pedestal mm -hmm, our materialism mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. superficial things when... And, and I know people who do that, that get a, a series regular or a movie or something, and they broke next week and then took the house from them in the car because they're trying to be somebody else. Yep. I don't try to keep up with the Joneses. I try to keep up with Don B. Welch. <laughs> and, that's, and that's good. And you know who you are. And relationships are very important because this is a town of relationships. Genuine. People know when it's fake. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's not about all that stuff, all that material. You, I have never known anybody to take anything with them when they left. That's true. You, you'll never see a hearse uh, followed by a U-Haul to the funeral. Look, G, I, what's his name? Steve Jobs uh, uh, was a, multi, a billionaire. Yeah. And when he got to the point when he was um, really sick and he was, you know, yeah. here's a man who had money to buy anything in the world. Mm -hmm. you could bring any doctor from anywhere in the world to come and help him yeah. get better. And he, and he could not get better, but what he had around him when he was on his last hours were not the business. It was his family. Yeah. And yeah. that is what is important because you know what? None of that stuff that he had and acquired and worked hard for can go with you when you leave here. That's right. That's right. The only thing that stays is what's the impact and what you left with Your others The legacy here. of whatever you left behind. Hey, all right, so let's get on to uh -oh. um, another one that's maybe not as inspirational, but I still, <laughs> but to the, but to actors it was. I mean, it somewhat inspired me. Okay. Okay. It, and whatever, it, it, whatever starts off with okay, oh, then you, you already know what you're about to get. <laughs> so this particular okay. Facebook right, post. Right, right, right. Okay. I don't want to hear nothing about no actors getting sick because of a little weather change in L.A. <laughs> please, after please, three exclamation points. If your ass was on Broadway where you do eight performances a week or a movie set where you up and filming at 5 a.m., no one would care. You just tough it up and get to work. The show must go on or you're in the wrong show. Two exclamation points. Boom. Go home. Yeah. And we talked about that earlier, but, you go know. Go home. Just go home. It, it, because I don't want to hear it. Listen, um, not when I have actors who take a bus and a train and, and, and some of them who work a nine to five job and then have to come and deal with me for five or six <laughs> more hours and then leave me and get on a bus and, and hope that they can make the last bus because they don't all like not like New York and Philly where they run all night. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to hear about your excuse because you know what? There's a lot of actors who just say, give me the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear anything unless you got somebody let up with some tubes. <laughs> in this <laughs> or you have children yeah i don't want to hear it exactly exactly hear it. and let that be a note to all the aspirants watching you know there, there's had, no I, excuse i had an actor tell me well i've lost my voice i said well that's okay but you ain't lost your ability to come and sit down and just watch amen you're gonna be at rehearsal and do what you have to do <laughs> i say as long as your legs work and everything else work you should be there Good morning. there's no excuse right. <laughs> all right Moving on. This is the last one that I got. And uh, by the way, there's a gazillion other, but this is just one. You must have really I, went off. I, I, man, <laughs> I, I, I did my read. And by the way, I have to say, if you're going to Donald Welch's uh, Facebook page right after a show, just be prepared to go through about 30 to 40 different pictures, praise reports, compliments before you could even get to anything that Don said. Because, I mean, and, and justifiably so. You know, everyone that saw the show last weekend was just 
you know, you know amazed was, at what they saw. It was a so, blessing. You're coming this week. I have either Friday. <laughs> it, I will was, be it, was, it was a blessing to have that. All right. So this one, this is kind of long, so maybe I'll just uh, uh, paraphrase a little bit. But it says, sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. Mm. I know this because years ago I found out I was. Mm. Couldn't grasp why things were the way they were. Complained, blamed others, got mad, sad. Nothing seemed to work to get better until I got out my own way. That's right. The more God blesses us with, the more we want. That's right. Now, this can be a good thing or a bad thing. It depends on how you look at it. Good in a sense that it will mean that you will keep striving and growing and climbing. Bad in a sense where we never slow down long enough to thank God and appreciate the blessings that he has already given us. And I love this part right here in parentheses. Read that line again. <laughs> Just in case you missed that. Right, right. And then right, it, right. Go, it goes on for a while. And then the last side, um, it says, you know, when we play victim, that's how everyone else sees us. That's right. Have a great day, family. Yeah, yeah. Because I love think, that. Yeah, love that. Well, because I think sometimes we do play victim. Mm -hmm. Woe is me. Oh, yeah. Nobody cares. Yeah. And when I say that, I mean, listen, I am the kind of person that I will call a friend at three o'clock in the morning and say, Do you love me? Not because I doubt that you do, not because I'm trying to see where your dedication and your loyalty is. I just need to hear it right then because I'm going through something. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we don't have days where we need to be able to reach out mm -hmm. and get comfort yeah. from friends and family and loved ones. No, but I, if, if, listen, I don't like excuses. <laughs> we know I that. <laughs> I don't like procrastination. <laughs> and if you really want to get on my wrong side, just be late. Oh, I don't know what's worse, coming late to rehearsal or bringing a pit bull to rehearsal. Bring the pit bull. <laughs> because we can, I don't like them, but we can tie him up or her up. But lateness... Yeah, there's no that, excuse. That, that, you, I just it just runs me wrong. I I I hear you. There is no excuse for. I'm already getting mad. There ain't nobody late because I ain't <laughs> even got a rehearsal tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Do not be late. All right. Do not be late. So if you're in the next show coming up, yep. Don't be late. <laughs> or actually just come late. I'm gonna come with a camera just to record the fiasco. And I play it on the next time we okay. have an interview. All right. Show what you mean. All right. Now, um, you know, just a few more things because I I know we got to wrap it up, but. The Oscar nominations were recently announced, mm -hmm. I believe last week, and a lot of people, particularly in the African-American community, were a little upset because they felt Selma was snubbed. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I, MLK Day was yesterday, so mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's, it's, Selma couldn't be more uh, relevant mm -hmm. than now. But um, you know, a lot of people that felt it was, it was snubbed because it was just nominated for two um, Academy Awards. What I wanted to ask you is that a lot of times we seek validation from mm -hmm. the academy mm -hmm. or awards mm -hmm. when we do work and put work out there mm -hmm. don't get me wrong mm -hmm. winning an oscar is not bad it'll mm -hmm. definitely up your paycheck mm -hmm. but you know at the end of the day should we hold these award ceremonies for all the creative people out there should we hold them in such high regard well here's the thing um awards are nice and because the academy is what they use to say this is great or wonderful yeah. or good or the Emmy Award or the uh, Golden Globe or the Grammy Award. They're all nice and we all want to be able to be in a position to get them. But here's what I say. Come on. When you think about Selma, which is a great film, think about the last three or four years with the Oscars when it got the best films. You want me to name them for you? 12 Years as a Slave. slave. The Butler. The, the Butler and the Django whatever it was called. Django Unchanged. Listen, what I'm saying to you is this. The performances were great, but what is the context of the films? Yeah. What, does that show what? the growth in Hollywood? Mm -hmm. um, if Selma is not a good film, don't nominate it just because it's a black uh, film. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, let's take Denzel. Denzel Washington won for Training Day, a rogue cop. Great performance. But you didn't do anything for him with Hurricane or uh, Malcolm X. Uh, Halle Berry won her Oscar Monster for, Ball. And I'm not going to say what, because we saw Monster Ball. <laughs> oh, Listen, yeah. what I'm saying is, and maybe that was the only film that they thought was Oscar worthy. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is that I don't understand who makes up the Academy of Voters. I know people, I know a couple of people. But the percentage of, and not just black folks, because Hispanic, Asian can say, listen, we ain't even, look, last time we was on something, you know, whatever. The fight is, we just, that is why a lot of people 
maybe we're kind of happy about the Sony leaks. Oh, that hack, yeah. That was Because what that shows That revealed a lot. Listen. <laughs> It, none of that stuff surprised people in this industry. If you were surprised by some of the things that you heard, then you are under a rock. Mm -hmm. But what it does is it exposes things that should not be done. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it makes change. And change is going to happen one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And so um, I don't, listen, the Oscars, let's talk about the Emmys. When is the last time a show, Ooh. an African-American show or Hispanic show was really nominated or what, from... Scandal from, or uh, <sighs> Chandra Rhimes? I know she always has But a that's few. not a black show. That's that, not okay. a... What, see, that, that, that's the difference. That's what makes me angry. Okay. Because <laughs> Hollywood will put a person, a lead actor in a role and all of a sudden it's a black show. It's not. It's not. What it is is a great show with all different... Um, uh, ethnic groups in it, yeah. but it has a lead Who's as an black. African American. Yeah. So all of a sudden, it's a, no. What I'm saying is, I remember going back to when a, uh, a single, uh, with, um, Living Single was on. Oh, a great show. Cool. But guess what came after Living Single? Friends yeah. doing the same exact thing, and wow. Friends does the same thing wow. that they were doing on Living Single, but Living Single never won an Emmy award. Why is it that Red Fox? On Sanford and Son, Great Sherman show. Hemsley on the Jeffersons, mm. never won an Emmy. Are you kidding me? What's wrong? I, I, I don't. That's what. That's what we need to know. You know, wake, wake up and. But I mean, I do like what you're saying though, as. You shouldn't necessarily just. And the Butler was a great film, by the way. Don't 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 get me oh, wrong. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying the nature of some of these films. Yeah, yeah. That the, get nominated more easily than a Selma. Yeah. Well, Selma got Best Picture. Uh, hey, they're getting the best picture now and best original and look score. At a with... And Ava, who is a wonderful director, got a Golden Globe. Now, that's another thing that pissed yeah, me off. Yeah, she got snubbed for best Listen, director, yeah. You know what pissed me off? Uh oh, what pissed it's you off? Because huh? usually, when you are a director or the actor that gets nominated for the Golden Globe, you You're get on... nominated for the Oscar that's automatic. automatically. That's automatic, yeah. You don't have time yeah. for me to be on this show today. Yeah. <laughs> You better wrap no, it up. No, 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 that is true. That As we know, the Golden Globes are the prerequisites for the Oscar. So, you know, it, it's you unfortunate. You better wrap it up. <laughs> Few more things before we wrap it up. Okay, um, let's get off that one then. I, I know, I know. I, I I'm think I, ready to get high I ignited July. a fire in here. I Ooh. love it, though. I love I, it. We we'll, would have thought this is a seat warmer chair on there. <laughs> You know, we'll have to do part two of this interview another time, and we'll, we'll address all those. Now, just uh, just real quick, you know, you, you know, obviously we know how, you, you know, decorated you are as um, a creator and the things that you've done. What would you say now is, you know, with all the success that you have, what would you say is the biggest challenge or, you know, thing that has come, you know? It Topping myself. Mm. Nobody else. Because you want to keep being creative and not because you're in a town where every because nobody don't care what you did yesterday anyway. You know that. You're only what you, did, yeah. what you did yesterday or last week, nobody cares. But I the challenge for me is to continue to be an innovator and a trailblazer. One of the things that my mom told me as a kid and my brother, because we were they that nobody in the family was ever in show business. She used to say Always be a leader, not a follower. Mm. And I've never been a follower of anything I, at all. I've only done what I wanted to do. And so um, for me to keep this thing going and to see as many kids come through the, the, the whatever you want to call it, the Dombey, whatever it is, yeah. and get the next opportunity and the next. I want you to be bigger than me. I want you to pass me. Because when I started in this industry, there were three networks, NBC, ABC, CBS. Well, if you want to call PBS, but they, that was Sesame Street shit. That was it. <laughs> you know, I love Big Bird. Yeah, but <laughs> shit, I didn't want to wear that costume all day. But what I'm saying is now you don't have an excuse to go out and create and reach millions of people mm -hmm. the people are taking phones and filming movies that's true that is true i mean so w there's so many networks and outlets and the, and the internet is so big and social media which can be pro and con it's it, there's no excuse for anybody who wants to be creative because mm -hmm. if you don't even have the skills to write or direct you can collaborate with somebody who does and <laughs> give them your ideas and they give you theirs and things can but see people want everything instant 
Yeah, we want that instant t- that instant gratification. Well we, well, we see that with the reality stars. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, uh, oh, be careful though. You talk about no, reality I, TV. I, no, we know no. my background. Yeah, I do. But, <laughs> no, no, I, I'm saying this. <laughs> hey, but believe me, I'm I'm all for you on but that. I, listen, that I'm was not, an accident. I'm not telling you that if a reality star is not also a good actor, that I would not hire them. I'm not saying that. Yeah. What I'm saying is do the work. <laughs> do the work. Yeah. I don't. If I see another one of these shows where these women are. Going across <laughs> tables and pulling weaves and hair and, 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 and drunk men drunk and falling in pools and things. That, listen. Excessive ratchetness is what he said. That's a nice word compared Ex- to what I call it. <laughs> you know, but I, but Don, I agree makes with me, you. Makes me, it, make, I, it makes I, me upset. I agree <laughs> with you so much as well. And I was actually joking around because believe me, I, I, I am not an advocate for reality TV. I really not. But you know, even I, the show you were on was more fun than some of this stuff that I'm looking at now. Well, I think it's just really gone just to, oh, the heights now is just kind of like. I was offered my own reality show last year what Ooh. because some people came and saw my rehearsals and said you would make great TV and I said I certainly would I know that yeah but here's the problem I'd watch it listen here's the problem <laughs> sure a it, lot of people watch it. Yes, but here's the problem you once you sign that dotted line mm-hmm. you have sold you have actually given your soul but you you sold yourself because here's the thing you have I don't even care if you own the project you have not. You do not own editing. Mm-hmm. And talk about it. And also, I they can a, portray you in any which way and, they want to. Your likeness. And, and I'm ahead. also a loose cannon, and I have a family back home <laughs> who go to church. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make sure you represent the Welches in a positive way. My right? mother is a very <laughs> quiet, behind the scenes type of woman. Yeah. And all she needs to do is go to her, go to our family church, and they say, "Well, we saw Don on. Uh, let me give a name because I don't want to give you. We saw Don on. What the hell are you doing up in the in in my house reality show? Whatever. Some crazy <laughs> That's name. the funniest title I've ever heard. I don't know because I don't want to <laughs> name one that somebody said. Who are you talking about my show? Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that, <laughs> what I'm, I'm a loose cannon. <laughs> that is hilarious. What the hell are you doing in my house? I'm a hashtag that after this. Edit. What, what the, the hell, hell are you doing, doing up my in house? my house? That's the name of a show right there, VH1. If you're watching, don't, ta- ta- don't, because they'll think it, they'll do it, <laughs> they'll do it. And I like VH1, by the way. I'm just saying that. Shout I'm out just, to 51 Minds. Go I'm ahead. just saying I can't do it. I'm not putting it past anybody else. Mm-hmm. Do what you gotta do. Yeah. But understand this: name me one reality star. Mm-hmm. I ain't talking about Nene because she used to act before she did it. Name me one reality star that has left reality TV and has become a legitimate working actor in Hollywood on film that we see all the time or on television that we see all the time. I don't see, I don't know if this counts, but would Jennifer Hudson count technically? That's a different type of reality show. That was a talent based reality show. Listen, American Idol, X Factor. Got talent, all those other. I don't even have a problem with Big Brother. Yeah. But what I'm saying is name one. From a, from, I I know the shows you're talking about. Yeah. I knew a chick that was on, I knew a, a, a girl wrote a story really quickly about her being on American Idol and she was, she didn't win. She went pretty far up and she said that, um, she was getting, she got used to the limousines and all those things like that. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, when, when the tour was over, they dropped her ass off the Burbank on a pl- off the plane, and she came outside with her bags, and there wasn't no cars and limousines. She had to hail a cab if she could get that. Uh, what I'm saying is, and so then you expect this person to go back to a um, normal, normal lifestyle. Life. Yeah, yeah. It's hard, it and is. nobody tells these kids when they make the money uh, what to do with mm, the money. You can say that a million times. Psh. You can say that a million times because that's true. Because I experienced that with some of the my fellow contestants as well. And you I know, know that, some people who've been on reality shows broke his three legged tables. <laughs> three legged table. That's ooh. That's bad. That's well. Well, uh, praise God that you know. Um, no one else is at that point. Okay, now real quick. <laughs> I have no idea what I meant with that. I'm I don't just know to wrap either, it up. all right. Um, okay, so this is the thing. I always end you know, my interviews with a 10 of 60, and basically a 10 of 60, you have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Wow. But before we do that, um, real quick, uh, as far as, uh, you know, I guess information on oh, yeah. those that are watching for the play yeah. this weekend. Uh, and- uh, Living Ain't Easy, Dying Ain't Beautiful is at the theater, theater. It's called Theater, Theater mm-hmm. at 5041 West Pico. Now, look. 
It's right across the street from Roscoe's. So yeah. <laughs> That's they it. We all that. know that. That's a and good yeah. trademark. And the show is at 8 o'clock Friday, 8 o'clock Saturday, and 6 o'clock on Sunday. And all seats to $25 general admission. And it's a great show. Uh, it's from a tour. It's from a tour adults only. Uh, but it really is a so great show. So don't bring show. the kids. No, no, yeah. no. Don't bring the kids. <laughs> Unless you want them leaving with some mm -mm. adult. But, it, but, but you're going to get a wonderful story. And these actors are so good. Man, I tear up about these actors yeah. because they work so hard. Well, I got to work with a couple of them, Tobias and um, what's his face? Sh uh, is it Shannon? Shannon uh, yeah. Tobi I got to work, and Tobias I um, Green is a beast. That's my dude. Tobias, TSU. Listen, Tobias Green is, and there's a young lady that the first time I've ever worked with her also, her name is Lex Scott, and she's a model. And mm -hmm. I said to her, listen, usually when you're this pretty, and you're modeling, people don't take you serious. This yeah. girl, if she follows what she's supposed to do in this industry, and I, all of them are good, but yeah. there's a couple people that you say, what in the world? Yeah. You're just yeah. gonna be crazy if you follow this whole thing. Uh, so, well, you you heard it right there. That's a good enough reason to go and see it. So please make sure you check that Mike out. Mike Strong, I mean, all these actors are good. All right. All right, that's my favorite Jamel part. Simon, I'm sorry. I'm thinking yeah. all about actors yeah, yeah, that are That is true because it. some actors are watching it and they're going to be like, wait, if don't oh, even I don't, say I, my name. Oh, well, shit, no. I, maybe, then, 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 look, you better give me my, there's a whole lot of them I ain't saying <laughs> from a lot of plays. I, I, I love the way Don keeps it real. All right, now this is the 10 of 60. Would you mind uh, uh, just throwing me my phone real quick in case so you see it? So I have 60 seconds to answer You got questions. 60 seconds. I'm going to time you right now. Well, you got 60 no seconds crazy shit. To, to ask. But, yeah, well, all right, go ahead. Do what you got to do. You grow. All right, you ready? Uh-uh. Actually, I'm not ready. Okay. okay. On your on your marks. Get set. All right. What is your guilty pleasure? Gangster lit books. <laughs> gangster lit, lit. Gangster lit. Gangster lit. Okay. So Don is gangster. All right. Uh, what is uh, who is your biggest inspiration? My mom, actually. Great answer. If a movie was made about your life, who would you like to portray you? Mm -mm. Uh, <laughs> I got six seconds to think about that. Um, <laughs> CeeLo Green. All right. Oh! No, you didn't say that. I was going to no. say Blair Underwood. The, oh. You said CeeLo Green. Next question. We got 60 seconds. Okay, the, best, the, the, the best song of all time. So Amazing by Luther Vandross. Anything, Luther. All right. One thing about you that no one would know. Uh, I used to... I Okay, does it matter when? It, it doesn't matter when. Okay. Well, I used to bite my toenails when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> now that's disturbing. Move it on. You asked, but nobody uh, I knew. Right. I don't do that shit I now. Really got I only got a few okay, more go ahead. Okay, what is your least favorite movie? Oh, <laughs> you ain't got all day. Least favorite movie that yeah. I've ever seen? <laughs> God, let's count the ways. I don't know. Uh, uh, go okay. pass. Anything starring Mariah Carey. All right. Oh, um, the, the, <laughs> I liked glitter. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're over a bit, but I'm okay. still going to keep going. Okay. The biggest misconception that people have about you? That I'm really, really, really tough because yeah. I really got a big heart. He does. I got a really big heart, and when you get to know me, you see that that's really true. Okay, these aren't long answer questions, but thank you. Okay. Teddy Bear. All right. Um, the, if, you were, if you were not a playwright, producer, director, you would be a? I definitely would do more of my singing career. Yeah. Yeah, Man, well, I forgot to get to that. All right, uh, two more left. The uh, best actor or actress that you are actually not no even that. Um, if there's one actor or actress you can work with, who would it be? Cicely Tyson, because I loved her dearly. I love her dearly. And then uh, actress that died, Geraldine Page, uh, who starred in the original uh, movie of um, the, the Trip to Bountiful. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, Robert both, De Niro. Both too. wonderful uh, answers. Last question: Who is your celebrity crush? Well, when I was growing up, Irene Cara from Sparkle. I was in love with Irene Cara. I went to the premiere and I sat there and looked at her more than I looked at the movie. <laughs> Irene Cara. And then, and, 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 and Kathy Sledge from Sister Sledge. And uh, she knows we that. We are family. Yeah, yeah, she knows that too. She's married, got kids, but Kathy Sledge and Irene Cara. I'm mad at that, Davi. I'm mad. <laughs> and of course, I am not mad at all the success this man is here. Ladies and gentlemen, Don B. Welch. Please make sure you go check his show out. Thank you. This Friday, theater, theater. Um, living ain't living ain't living easy. Ain't dying ain't beautiful. Dying ain't beautiful. Please make sure you check it out. Incredible man right here. Thank you. Renaissance man. Thank you. Don B. Welsh, thank you so much for being here. Any last words of wisdom you want to give the fans before leaving? I just want to say keep being you. Whatever that means, keep being you. And we're glad you're you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Kevin John. I will catch you guys <laughs> next week. Next time y'all have me a Pepsi and some ice. This water ain't working. No. <laughs>
from executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit at AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.